the eyes to see and the ears to hear. I want to welcome you to tonight's, today's telecast. As you view this, God will bless you richly. And it's going to be a little bit of interaction that you too can listen and write down in any part of the world where you are, where you are seated, you are doing anything and you, as you are watching. I want to use the book of Acts, chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. The Bible says in verse 1, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. Whatsoever want to achieve as a child of God, you need to pray, you need to see God's face. You need to know His purpose for your life. The Bible says Peter and John went up together into the temple. Now, as a Christian, you must inculcate the habit of fellowshipping together. The Bible says, woe is unto that person who is alone, because when trouble comes, they will not find help. Peter and John, high on sharp net iron, they went together into the temple in the hour of prayer. And because they were together, the Bible says in verse 2, that and a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask arms of them that entered into the temple. Now, something supernatural is about to take place because every day that God wakes you up from your bed, something supernatural must happen. You must influence someone else's life. The Bible says by that three o'clock in the afternoon, there was this guy at the gate that they always bring there to ask for arms, to beg, to cry, intimidated, frustrated, bastardized, no purpose. But because the people that has a spirit, a, a, a prayerful spirit, the, the, the life of prayer, they can discern that this man is not destined to be a beggar. The purpose of God for him was not to beg. The Bible says as they got there, and sometimes, even these particular problems, these particular things that confront us may be in form of spells or causes or a negative covenant. But I want to assure you, there's a day a portion that all those yokes shall be broken. And I say in the name of Jesus, uh, maybe there's a negative covenant holding you bound. There's a spell that you inherited from your mother's womb. There's uh, a manipulation around your area that is affecting you negatively. I command those yokes to be broken in the name of Jesus. Uh, the Bible says uh, that man was there and he was always there at the gate of the temple, which means he already had the life of God, he has heard of God, he is now, he, he goes to church, he is a Christian, he's at the gate, he's at the gate. Something is always very, you know, they say always a problem sitting at the gate. He's at the gate of the building called the temple called beautiful. He, though he, he always sit down at the gate of the building called, called beautiful, but his life was never beautiful. He had nothing to show for it. The, and that particular building could not even influence his life because he's supposed to be the one that's supposed to influence the building, not the building influencing. So he remained a beggar. He, 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 I don't know for how many years he, you've been, you say you're serving God, you know your pastor, you've been, they lay hands on you, you've attended different seminars and crusade, whatever, and they prophesied, and yet nothing is happening. It's because you are the gates. 
you just remain there at the gate. But thank God for these two men. These two men that carry the power of God. The Bible says when they got there, they saw the man begging. They saw the man not fulfilling the purpose of God for his life. What did they do? The Bible says, who seen Peter and Vasiri and John about to go into the temple, ask for arms. The man started begging these people. But this particular ministers, these two ministers we are talking about, they are preaching transformational gospel. They, they are ready to transform lives. They are not the people that give people bread. They are not the people that give people fish. They want you to give other people fish. So when they saw Peter and John, when they saw Peter and John, he told them, he said, can I have some money there too? But instead of Peter to look into his pocket, like most of us we do now, we do a lot of things to attract people to the church. Uh, we want to give them food, want to give them money, want to do some other things. But that is not because everybody is is built and born according to the purpose. And what, did, what was the Peter and John response? And Peter, fasting his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. That means, look at us as examples. We, we, we were coming here, we did not stay at the gate begging. We enter into the temple because there is, you can only enter his gates with thanksgiving. But it's only when you get into his courts you praise God. Praising is different from thanksgiving. You're thanking God for what he has done, but when you enter into his courts, it's with praise. And the court is inside the beautiful temple, not at the gate. And they told the man and said, you know what, you don't have to sit down here. It's, they told him, listen to me, we are not going to give you anything, because silver and gold we do not have. But what we have in the name of Jesus, take up your bed. How are you taking care of your weaknesses? Are you already, have you already condemned yourself? And you say, I've been serving God for many years and nothing is happening. I go to church, I'm tired of church. I don't want to go to any church again. Look at yourself. You are responsible. Take up your bed. There's something unique inside of you. There's something, there's fire inside of you that somebody is waiting for. You take up your bed, rise up. Don't stay there any longer. Come on, no more parking space. Stand up and do something. You to get into it. Uh, be an evangelist. You to minister to somebody. Let the grace of God upon your life that has kept you not to die in begging. Something is happening. That's why you did not die in this begging. That's why you are not afflicted in the begging. Stand up. Uh, take up your bed. And the Bible says immediately. It took him by the right hand. The only thing we have to do to ourselves is to give herself a happy hand, not to make herself lazy and sit down there. The church cannot save you. Your title in the church cannot save you. Even as a pastor, your title cannot save you. Whatever you have cannot save you. But you have to live a life that influences other people's life. Don't let the aroma and the beauty of the gospel, of what we are, what we are attract carnally, uh, physically, be the one that influences us. Let us be the one that influences us such things. Let us be in charge of all these things. Uh, let, let prosperity be our playboy. Let prosperity be our errand boy. Let it not be our message. It should be, it, it, we should be producing it. We should not be asking for it. We should, be, we should be the one generating it. We should not be asking for it. That was exactly what that man was doing at the gates of the temple called Beautiful. He was asking for what he should generate. It should be the one flowing prosperity out. Through him, prosperity should flow. The Bible says, for this Jesus Christ of Nazareth, though he became poor, so that through his poverty, we might be rich. He, the poverty they saw on his physical body was different from what he carried in his spiritual entity. He carried prosperity in his spiritual entity. That was why even when he had no place to sleep, he gave people rest. When he had no food to eat, he was able to feed thousands of people with loaves of bread and fish. We are supposed to be the one that influenced the beauty, not the beauty of the temple influencing us. And the Bible says the man took his bed, rise up and began to jump. Energy came back. Joy came back. His confidence came back. And he began to jubilate. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. 
whatsoever has kept you in a place that made you to be stagnant, I command it to dry off in the name of Jesus. I command you to rise up. You've been crawling, begin to run. You've been crawling, begin to jump in the name of Jesus. You, 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 you've been destabilized. You felt there's no hope. I'm telling you, there's hope in Christ. There's joy in Him. Just look unto Him. That was what Peter and John said. He said, look unto us. Look unto Him, the author and finisher of your faith. He, those that put their trust in man shall fail. You will lose your dream. But put your trust in God. Where your help coming from? Those that know the God they serve, they are always ever stronger. They can do exploits. You can do things that are unbelievable. You can finish that project in no time. You can get that your dream realized. Don't sit down there. Stand up and begin to walk in the name of Jesus. Every leg that is crippled spiritually, every eye that is blind spiritually, every arm that is paralyzed spiritually, I command them to be restored in the name of Jesus. Begin to do what you couldn't do before. I say you are on the, on, 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 on the trail of, of success. Move ahead. And the man began to jump. And he followed them into the temple. The temple that has been sitting for years, he couldn't enter. He now followed them into the temple. He became part of the servers in the church. He became part of the ministers in the church. He too began to impart knowledge in people. And rather than begging, he too became a, 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 a source of influence. Your life should influence other people. Don't ever, at any given time, be looking for what you benefit from God. Look at how. God will use you to benefit others. Yes. Don't be serious with God. Worship God with prayers. Give your tithes and offerings. Bless people around you. Bless the widow. Bless the poor. Bless ministers. Do the things of God. Serve God with all your heart. Don't let it be until somebody tells you you must do it. It's supposed to flow right from within you. It's, giving is supposed to be an attitude. It's not supposed to be a message in the church. It's supposed to be our attitude. Because when a mother, a mother gives back to a child, that child doesn't ask for milk from the best breast before the mother feels that this child needs milk. The father that created you knows what you desire, what you want. He will give it to you. And don't be selfish. Stop asking God for what will benefit you. Ask God for what will benefit others. That God should give you what will benefit others. Think about others a lot. You you can't give people happiness without you having share of it. You cannot give happiness if you don't have a share of happiness. So be, have the desire to jump up, to be part of it. Stop begging. Stop condemning yourself. Rather than condemning yourself, right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, begin to commend yourself. Make yourself happy. The Lord you serve is able to do all things. Give God your attention. Be a spender to receive from him. Stop enjoying the influence of others. Come on, go and influence other people. Don't hide under people and begin to enjoy the aroma. I, I, and I want to use this opportunity to even speak to, to ministers of the gospel. That we, we put people under pressure that if they don't see us, nothing happens. We, we, we don't want them to be liberated. They must come to church seven days a week. We are teaching people to be lazy. We are teaching them not to, to, to do things. Let them take up their bed and walk. Let, them, let, let us give them a message and direction that they will go for seven days and return with testimony. Let, the, let, the, let us not bring people to be interpreting our dreams, but rather let us interpret their dreams. Let, the, let us interpret these dreams. That was what Jesus came for, and that is what Jesus is all about. He came here to interpret our dreams. We lost our purpose in the Garden of Eden. And he knew that we still wanted to go back. He came back because of us. Because when he was coming back, the world was so wicked. That even God asked his question, who shall I send? Nobody was able to respond. The Bible says heaven was silent. But he came, he said, I will go there to interpret their dreams. I will go. And God told him, he said, for the reason that you said you were going to interpret other people's dreams, I hereby give you a name. That is above every other name. We can only be promoted if we go ahead interpreting people's dreams. Let us go ahead and interpret people's dreams. When then, they, then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping. Your promotion is coming. Your joy is here. Your breakthrough is here. Just take up your bed. Make a decision today. Don't wait for the time to make a right decision. Make your decision and make it right. There is no time for right decision. Make it now and make that decision right. You can't fail. 
you cannot fail. It's not possible. If you do not fail as a beggar, how will you fail as a champion? God bless you. I want to thank you for listening. This is Pastor Ayori Day Oduto, the pastor in charge of Jesus in His Mightiness Global Ministry, Lagos, Nigeria. I'm talking to you right from Orlando. And I want to tell you that uh, whatsoever you hear and you see is a means of encouragement, send it to us. Let us know so that we will be encouraged too. God bless you. God bless you. Bye.